Since 1985, VPL Research has been pioneering the fields of virtual reality and visual programming languages. On June 7, 1989, VPL Research presented the RB2 system, the first virtual reality system to accommodate two people. The RB2 system is a tool for creating virtual realities. The user can create a simulation with great flexibility and then enter and interact with that simulated world as though it were real. Users can grasp virtual objects or operate a virtual control. Virtual clocks can tick and virtual instruments can display real-world information. When computer displays and sensors are mounted directly onto the ears and eyes, they can control the same sensory information that is perceived by the human body and therefore synthesize a wide range of external environments. Virtual reality is a simulation system that has very general purpose, as opposed to a flight simulator that has a very specific purpose. In order to achieve a multi-purpose simulator, VPL has created a series of computer peripherals, including the data glove and the iPhone, which bring the users inside the virtual world. The data glove is an input device worn on the hand. It reads the gesture and movement of the hand and transfers it into the virtual world. The data glove consists of two primary sensors. Along the fingers are fiber optic sensors that measure the bends of the fingers. The polemus records the overall movement and orientation of the hand in six degrees of freedom. Together, these are used to generate a virtual human hand, capable of manipulating virtual objects, and in general, allowing a human being to use the same hand-eye coordination strategies for manipulating the virtual world that come into play in the physical world. One of the key peripherals for generating a virtual reality is a head-mounted display. VPL's head-mounted display is called the iPhone. Worn over the head, the iPhone immerses the user in the virtual world by surrounding her eyes with stereo video and her ears with stereo sound. In front of each eye are a combination of wide-angle optics and a display. The RB2 system generates a stereo three-dimensional wide-angle view that creates the impression that you're inside the simulation as opposed to viewing it on a monitor. The images inside the iPhone are generated in real time by powerful workstations such as the Silicon Graphics Iris. The position and orientation of the head is determined by a polemus navigational tracking sensor mounted on top of the iPhone. This information is used to tell the computer workstation how to orient the simulation. By turning her head to the left, the entire simulated scene is rotated in the opposite direction to compensate for her head movement. In this way, an illusion is created that while you are moving, an exterior environment is standing still, just as a physical room would. VPL's products are used today in a wide range of industries including engineering and automotive design, data visualization, medical research, teleoperation and robotics, architectural previewing, and a wide range of others. The system has been on sale since 1989 and they have hundreds of users around the world. I'm George Zachary with VPL Research, and I'm going to talk about the VPL products, hardware and software, which make virtual reality possible. The Macintosh computer serves as a control workstation, also as a design workstation. In terms of control, you can have data gloves, data suits, data vests, any type of device to map the user into the virtual reality. In terms of a design workstation, the Macintosh uses the VPL product Body Electric, which uh, allows the user to build virtual worlds and to understand gestures of the hands and also to manipulate different types of graphical objects, objects which are built in VPL's product RB2 Swivel, a virtual reality version of Swivel 3D. At that point, the Body Electric software sends the uh, images to the Silicon Graphics hardware. The Silicon Graphics hardware acts as a video renderer and it uses a VPL product known as Isaac. Isaac is a full renderer that runs on the Silicon Graphics. At that point, 
Isaac running on the Silicon Graphics sends a video image to these iPhones. The VPL iPhones have two LCD TVs which present a stereoscopic view of the virtual world. Meanwhile, on the Macintosh, Body Electric is actively running the simulation. While the iPhones see fully shaded renderings, Flex, a programming environment of Body Electric, acts as a control panel for real-time editing. VPL is also putting sound into virtual reality. The audio sphere renders sound in three dimensions, height and depth, as well as left and right. The user perceives sound as coming from a specific location in the virtual world. The audio sphere includes a 320 MIP signal processor called the Convolvatron, software, and a digital sampler synthesizer for sound creation. Here is a typical audio sphere configuration. Other inputs include a headset mic and MIDI equipment. A simple test environment demonstrates sound properties within virtual reality. Let's fly over to it. It gets very loud when I get right up to it. I can grab it, put it up to my right ear, put it in front of me, put it directly behind my head, put it up to my left ear, and the sounds are relatively realistic. The way the sound changes follows the way that sound changes in the real world. Some applications underway using VPL's RB2 system include architecture, entertainment, robotics, medical, and engineering. The Seattle waterfront demonstrates the potential of virtual reality for the architectural community. Planning for cities becomes a visualization process that can be fully experienced by a potential visitor or city planner. With virtual reality, interior design and planning can be visually communicated to clients, laying open a wide variety of opportunities for the design professional. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this new switch, see if I can turn on the fan. There it goes. Oh, and look at the, mo the Movio looks great up there. That was a good idea to put it there. So I'll stop it. Stationary and start it again. Oh, that's terrific. Maybe I'll move the fan over more towards the middle of the room. Oh, look at the clock. What time is it? Is it really almost three o'clock? Seriously? That's a great clock. I guess it really is almost three. Oh. 
Where's my new fridge? I don't know. I think the fridge is going to be too far from the sink there. I think I'll have that counter cut and part of the part of the uh, counter put on the other side of the fridge and bring it in. And then to get a triangular sort of pattern between the, uh, the fridge and the sink and the, and the stove, I think instead of putting the stove against the wall, I'll put it down there. The Ritual World incorporates sound and 3D graphics to create a fully interactive world for entertainment. Each user can create their own unique playground. Plans for remote control of the Puma robotic arm in space are under development at NASA Ames Research. An exact model of the Puma was created in RB2 Swivel. The model was brought into virtual reality and mapped to respond to the motions of the user. This real-time control was programmed in Flex, VPL's visual programming environment. The motions are then passed to the actual Puma. Sophisticated motions of the hand and arm, which are simple for humans to perform, are difficult to program using traditional methods. Therefore, the data glove is ideal as it can precisely replicate and record the motions of the human operator. Stanford University has used the data glove as a tool for surgical planning and medical research. The 3D skeletal hand, generated from an MRI scan, provides scientific visualization of the human hand. Automotive engineers use virtual reality to evaluate complex control and system design issues. With the advent of networking, the scope of applications for virtual reality has increased dramatically. Virtual reality becomes a tool for communication, collaboration, and pooling of resources. Using the RB2 system, virtual reality has moved from an abstract concept into practical, real-world applications. New advances underway this year include the Videosphere, a panoramic 3D video background for virtual reality, which was demonstrated for the first time in Dallas at Seagraph 90 and RealityNet, a network for linking multiple users online across the continent. In 1991, new input devices and a new iPhone style will be available. 
VPL Research, located in Redwood City, south of San Francisco, has been at the forefront of virtual reality since 1985. Founded by Jaron Lanier and Jean-Jacques Rameau, VPL continues to research, develop, manufacture, and license virtual reality technology. As we enter into the 21st century, virtual reality will not be seen as a medium used within physical reality, but rather as a new realm of reality.